Hi, I'm Chris Cooper from Norfolk Yacht Agency and this is a short walkthrough video of a motor cruiser Whitewater. She's a Group 44, built in 1991. She was commissioned in March of 1992. Let's just walk down the uh, pontoon here. You see some teak decks there, stainless window packs. She's been polished and uh, anti felt Really nice condition. snug on this morning mooring over here in Horning but uh, she's pretty good all round as you as you look around her no damage or marks she's in pretty good order let's take your board so out of the wind in the cockpit here. It's quite a nice place to be, really. So Whitewater, she was uh, she was commissioned in uh, March of uh, 1992, and she originally had uh, the Volvo um, TAMD 71s, which was um, which was an upgrade engine on the um, on the standard spec, but uh, but. Uh, in 2002, her owner at the time um, decided to re-engine her with uh, TAMD 74Ps, which are 480 horsepower. And, uh, and he spec'd those with the EDC um, electronic controls, uh, which is um, something we obviously see on a later boat. So, so she's got a nice engine package, um, which is, uh, which is, you know, considerably younger than the uh, than the boat itself. Although, as you look around these brooms, um, they're not they're not dated. Um, they're uh, they're pretty classic boats, really, in terms of their styling and um, and uh, fittings. I mean, yes, you can see the difference between a you know nineteen nineties boat and a you know and a twenty twenty model, but um, but you know the the, the quality of the uh, of the of the build and the construction and the materials that uh, that are inside the boat um, do kind of um, mask the um, the age of the boat. Um, although this, I think, is in really good condition, and and, and most of these brooms are. They were um, they were they were no, they weren't cheap boats. I mean, this in ninety ninety one was well over three hundred thousand pounds worth of boat. You know, um, I bought my first house uh, in the 90s and uh, I certainly didn't um, spend anywhere near that amount of money so they really were a, a toy for the for the wealthy so as I've spun around in here I suppose I, I should I should explain what we've got and uh, and there's uh, two navigators positions there they're on um, gas uh, gas suspension seats and you've got a, a pretty big chart table in front of the navigators there. Helm is on a gas suspension seat as well. And these boats are really quite seriously capable things. And then navigation wise, uh, there's a um, Raymarine RL80, which is a, a color um, plotter and radar, um, part of the Pathfinder range. You've got a standard horizon, uh, which is a, um, a standalone GPS. And we've got a um, Auto Helm uh, 7000 autopilot here. The Hummingbird, the display on the Hummingbird is, is just um, a little crazed, but uh, but it still functions. Uh, that is a... Um, that's a three-dimensional sonar, so it's a forward-facing a forward -facing sonar. It would have been a really expensive bit of kit when it was fitted. And then the uh, Sea Talk and Autohelm units here are 
speed and depth logs. There's a compass in the middle. And then we've just got a timer unit on the end there. So timer, that's someone who's, uh, who uh, takes their navigation seriously. So upholstery wise, as you, you go around the boat, the, the upholstery's in, in reasonable condition. It's not, you know, it, it is, I think probably, um, well, it's probably not original upholstery, but I think there is some age to it. Um, but it's all it's all acceptable. There's no rips or tears or uh, or any damage to it. Uh, there are some slight shadows when you when you get up really close. You can sort of <laughs> see you know marks of of um, use and wear and what have you. But um, but overall, it's in pretty yeah you know, pretty good nick. Uh, VHF, sorry, I should have mentioned that when I was talking about the navigation kit. So that is uh, Ray 240E, um, which is uh, reasonably up to date. It's not a, a DSC set, but it's a good quality uh, VHF. Right, so let's take you below. So this is the saloon in the 44. And you've got two um, clear seating areas here, although both are of a sofa style. So I would suggest really that's the, that's kind of the eating area really. The large table there. And then this is, um, this is your saloon and sort of relaxing sofa area with the coffee table. And then we've got a sideboard that runs down the starboard side of the boat. So in the middle here is a um, saloon fridge. That's a 12 volt fridge. And then we've got some drink storage. Oh, TV outlet in there, so. Nav techs on the back wall here with the clock, the obligatory clock and barometer. And then we've got a little bill pack in the corner there. Air conditioning control over here. It's reverse cycle air conditioning, so it will heat uh, as well as, um, as cool. And then we've got outlet here and some vents there and, uh, and the air conditioning also outlets into the off cabin so going forward you've got your galley on the lower level this has had overnight overnight surfaces at some point it wouldn't originally have had that um, in fact really I think there's a lot of things that this boat has had over the years as, as updates and upgrades uh, we've got a gas hob, four in gas burner, and then we've got a um, Panasonic uh, combi microwave oven. So that's a microwave with a uh, with an oven and a grill function. And then we've got quite a large 12, um, 12 240 volt Waco fridge. That's obviously a relatively new bit of kit. Um, and I noticed when I was in the engine bay having a look around earlier that there is a proper uh, Waco rectifier fitted in there so um, so it is it's just genuine um, 12 to 40 volt um, fridge there are some nice features in this though actually I noticed yesterday again as I was having a sort of look around and familiarizing myself there's a, there's lots of little storage spots there's another one under my feet in the galley here as well so there's two two you know, two storage bins makes really good use of the space so Walking forward, we've got a mid cabin to starboard, and that's got crossover berths. It's a really, if I just pan back and show the floor space, that's actually a really big cabin. Come in and do a spin. So the berth space, your, your feet tuck under 
in the space there, and then you've got the upper berth in there. So certainly no, um, no kids are going to complain about uh, about that as a as a mid cabin. So if I just back out and uh, and pan around. This is your forward cabin. So we've got an island double berth in here, and then we've got plenty of storage. There's a hanging locker on this side here. We do like a bit of storage. Oh, and actually you can see that the fly screen's there for the for the saloon hatches above me. These really nice um, solid components in, in, in the brooms, especially actually of this era, they were really well built boats. I mean, very expensive boats at the time, but you know, big stainless steel port lights. And the timber work, when you look through it, it's in, you know, it's in really good nick. But, it, you know, there's no surprise it's in good nick because it is of a really high quality. But then I guess that's what um, was synonymous with um, with bring. So, again, I'll just back away here and open the door. You've got a um, Jack and Jill toilet and shower compartment. Um, I say Jack and Jill, the reason that, uh, that we describe it that way is that there is a... Uh, there's a door through from uh, the forward end of the boat. So that um, that would probably get described as a day heads as well, but it's an ensuite into the into the forward cabin. Uh, another nice feature actually, you've got um, Tecmar toilets in uh, in both the toilet compartments. So these are um, these are modern electric flush um, toilets, P pretty much the best that uh, that you can get certainly very reliable units anyway and that is a shower shower tray as well I mean there's carpet laid on the um, on the shower the shower tray but um, but there's the there's the shower and the shower curtain that side and the shower track if I just pan back so that is a usable decent um, toilet compartment so We'll travel back up through the boat, back through the galley, into the saloon. Big engine hatch here. If I, as I walk across the top, I'll just show you a picture of it. So we'll get in there in a second, but uh, but really good access into the engine space. And here we go down into the aft cabin, past the. Um, the main distribution board as we go again i'll come back and show you that in just a sec so here's our master cabin and again there's lots of floor space in in the boats of these of this size really plenty of room around the around the berth nice big cabin space Dressing table there, it's all really nicely illuminated. Loads of drawer storage, hanging lockers. There's the outlet for the uh, for the aircon in the aft cabin here, and it's a good storage space. Good hanging locker. So here's our master uh, ensuite. So again, we've got a Tecmar toilet in there. Modern, high quality electric flush toilet. Tim works all in really good condition. But then a really nice feature in these is a separate uh, shower cubicle. So if I come into the compartment and just back away a little bit. So you have a proper shower cubicle. Little step seat there. And a shower door, solid shower door. So really usable compartment. Just show you another angle of this. Around the corner here, we've got quite a nice sort of dressing dressing area or maybe put a TV there. Or... Big cabin. Lots of space, very comfortable boat. So here's our distribution board. You've got um, 
240 at the top of the board. So there's a start stop control for the generator there. And the main breakers, you've got uh, DC underneath and um, there's a set of ammeters and volt gauges, uh, key switch isolators, and, uh, and then uh, a myriad of, um, of breakers, uh, 12 volt breakers for the boat circuits below. Uh, engine room light, which is the illuminated switch. I always think that's quite a nice little touch actually. So there's no doubt that the engine room light is on. And then we've got um, holding tank gauge there as well. So both the toilets feed into holding tanks. And uh, I would imagine there's a discharge to see on both of them as well. So here's our engine access, and there's the uh, the board up. I was on gas strut, so it's nice and easy to lift up. I have just taken uh, the centre support out just to make it easier to see what's going on in the engine space. So it's ever so easy to lift that out. Just gives you a little bit better access. So here we go. A couple of 74 P's. Nicely arranged engine bay. Ladder at the front there. The engines are very clean, very tidy units. Perhaps I said to one of my colleagues earlier, I think they're, I think this engine bay is about as clean as it gets, really. You know, without um, without somebody having been in here and um, you know, and obviously cleaned and tidied it. You know, it's all very genuine, which is something that we really like to see. You know, this is a well-kept boat, um, you know, not something that's been dollied up. And I think that's quite obvious, actually, as you go around it, you know, there's um, there's elements uh, of it that, you know, that where, where it shows its age. But but really, um, it's it's all in, um, you know, in very good, clean, you know, tidy condition. Right, I'm just going to hop down into this engine space and just uh, and just show you the back end of the uh, of the engine room. Bear with me a moment. We'll be back in a sec. So here I am in the hull. Well, there's actually a reasonable amount of space in here. I mean, I, I've said it before, I am a big guy, but, uh, but I don't think you'd complain about working in here. So we've got weed filters at the back end here. Really easy to get to. The seacocks down there, right between the engines. Couldn't be much easier. Um, fuel filters just here. And then we've got batteries along the back of the engine space. Battery charger, Victron battery charger in the corner there. All pretty tidy. And as I said before, really not um, you know not immaculate, not spotless, but you know genuine. No big corrosion. No, you know nothing obviously out of place. And I think this is a. Uh, well cared for boat. So I'm just going to brave the uh, the wind and uh, step out onto the side deck, give you a little tour of the uh, of the decks. So we've got teak decks all the way around the exterior of the boat and uh, stainless stainless screens, which is nice feature big four deck here windows controls and about and we've got some um, fender baskets big fenders on this boat There's two lots of fender baskets another set of fender baskets on the opposite side of the boat there forward hatches ladder which um, is just stowed up here at the moment but a nice sort of bespoke fabricated stainless boarding ladder that um, that sits that sits on the deck make it nice and easier to get uh, to get up and down onto the boat I haven't put it on the other side of the boat because I don't really want to advertise her as a, as a climbing frame she's right outside our in the 
outside our leisure centre here as well. Not that that's open right at the minute, but all windscreen wipers and washers there on the full deck. Another thing that I should I should just mention all the brooms really, or the majority of the broom models have folding uh, folding arches. So here we are in Horning. I mean the boat's um, under its own steam as uh, has got has got round to us um, under the Vauxhall Bridge, so she'll fold down pretty low. Got opening side windows as well, which is quite a nice feature. And on both sides, it's really the side the side window by the helm position opens as well. So nice and shiny. As I said, she's just been polished and anti fouled In really good condition. Ready for adventures.